On the 2nd of January 2023, two sightseeing helicopters operated by SeaWorld Helicopters were involved in a media collision on Australia's Gold Coast. While it's far too soon for official reports, there are some early factors and questions that might yield some clues about the cause of the accident. This is what we know about the Gold Coast helicopter collision. SeaWorld helicopters operate from Australia's SeaWorld theme park on the Gold Coast. While not owned by SeaWorld itself, the helicopters sport the SeaWorld brandings and logos. They offer anything from five-minute tours over the park to flights lasting more than an hour, as well as charters and trips up and down the east coast of Australia. Traditionally, SeaWorld helicopters operated a fleet of Eurocopter AS350s. However, they had recently acquired two EC-130s. The latter two were involved in the accident. One point to note in this change is, the older AS-350s had the pilot in the right seat, while the pilot sits in the left in the newer EC-130s. Given that line of sight was almost certainly an element in the collision, the Australian Transport Safety Bureau will definitely investigate this factor. At around 1.59pm on the 2nd of January 2023, a SeaWorld Helicopters EC-130 piloted by Michael James was on its descent to the helipad at SeaWorld. It was carrying five passengers. Departing for a sightseeing tour at about the same time was another of the company's new EC-130s with six passengers. In control was head pilot Ash Jenkinson. Stills from a video captured from the rear seat of the arriving helicopter show the passengers curiously aware of the departing chopper, while the pilot in the front seat, blinded by the pillar of his front windshield, appears unaware of its presence. As the passengers realise the trajectory of the departing chopper is looking dangerous, they momentarily hesitate to alert the pilot. However, as a collision becomes inevitable, he taps the pilot's shoulder to alert him, and everyone grabs their seats bracing for impact. In the moments that followed, the departing chopper collided with the nose and underside of the one arriving, causing the gearbox and main rotor of the ascending helicopter to detach, and the helicopter plummeted 200 feet onto the sandbar below, sadly killing four of the seven on board, including the pilot. With a shattered windshield and badly damaged control panel, the arriving helicopter made an emergency landing on the same sandbar, Miraculously, all on board escaped with only minor injuries. In the immediate aftermath of the accident, horrific scenes were witnessed by members of the public. Um, this, this must be traumatic for you. It is. It's really traumatic. Surviving pilot, he was very dazed and confused. I don't think he could actually believe what had happened. Attending the scene to administer first aid were beachgoers, boaters, nearby police and off-duty medical staff. All nine survivors were taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau, or ATSB, will investigate the accident. They don't expect their final report until midway through next year. However, there are some key questions they will be asking, which we'll discuss here. The SeaWorld helicopters work on a system known as Sea and Avoid. Essentially, each pilot is responsible for spotting and avoiding potential hazards they should also be in constant radio contact with each other. The first questions the ATSB will be asking is, were the pilots in communication with each other? Did they understand where the other was and what they were doing? Given the visibility on the day was almost perfect, the next question is, well, why didn't they see each other? This one is possibly more simple. Each aircraft's height, position and angle resulted in a blind spot for the opposing pilot. So given that neither pilot seemed to know exactly where the other was, another question is, why did the ascending helicopter take off? Did he take off not knowing where the other one was, or was there a misunderstanding between the two pilots? Aviation expert Neil Hansford alludes to what some might call a monotonous flight schedule. So the helicopter lands, you get the people off, then the next group of people are out, the pilot takes off, does a five-minute circle, comes back, and does it all again. 
had the constant up and down on five minute flights all day long become too routine for the pilots. Jeffrey Thomas, the editor in chief of airlineratings.com, said, This is an accident that should never have happened. There were perfect flying conditions, both helicopters were in sight of each other and in communication with each other. These are some of the questions that will no doubt be on investigators' minds as they investigate the accident. Please keep in mind, this is an unfolding tragedy and new information will come to light over the coming weeks, months and even years.